Hey everybody, welcome back to the Print 3D channel. The September Maker Box has arrived and we're going to unbox it, check out the cool new filaments inside, print out a bunch of stuff, and I'm going to share my results with you guys, so stick around. Hey everybody, welcome back, and thank you for joining me here on the Print 3D channel. Like I was saying, the September Maker Box has arrived. We're going to unbox it, check out the filaments inside, and we're going to start printing. And I'm going to share my results with you at the end. That's usually the longest part, is actually the testing of the filaments, and then going over all the different prints after it's done. So bear with me, these videos tend to be between 45 minutes to an hour long. I know that's really long, but you can scan through it if you're only interested in the print results to the end of the video. I wish I could figure out the chaptering and I could put that down in the description. Maybe you guys can help me figure that out and put that down in the comment section below. First off, a big shout out to MakerBox for sending along their September MakerBox of filaments. This is the, I believe it's the middle level, which gives us five packets of filament to try out, plus some really cool goodies that have something to do with 3D printing if you're not familiar with the MakerBox system. And their information will be down in the description where you can sign up for your own maker box and get the same filaments that I'm getting. This is the September box. I'm really excited about it because it only arrived a few days ago. And normally I don't get a chance to dig into these for a couple of days or even a week. And then I'm testing and printing out samples for you guys for the next two weeks. This one just arrived like maybe two days ago. So I'm gonna go ahead and dig in. We're gonna test the filaments right away, make sure all the diameter, the bend test, the clip test, and then we're going to get printing our standard objects, which you can see over here from last month's. That's the August Maker Box, and you can watch that video here. So let's go ahead and open it up and see what we got inside. And as always, everything that we print, those models will be listed down in the description below. So let's go ahead and open this up and see what's inside. I'm very curious because last month's had a lot of really cool filaments in there, especially the filaments from Extrude Ur. And of course, I printed out my very first ABS print using the samples that came along in there and actually used up everything that came in the maker box. So let's go ahead and see what we got in here. I'll give you guys a good camera angle so you can see. Now I have to cover up the QR codes on anything that has it because I record all my videos with Apple devices and even though I disconnected the Wi-Fi, the phone will pick up on the LTE and try to go to the website, which would probably be cool in most situations, but not when you're filming a video. So the first thing we see in here is their Read This, which I believe is their referral program, and it is. And you guys can see the information there. There's no QR code, I hope. Oh, there is one. But luckily the camera didn't pick it up because I didn't hear it beep. So I think we're okay. <laughs> Should have saw that right on there. So this is their referral program. You refer three friends and you get a free maker box as long as you have an existing subscription. So that's really cool. The next thing I see is a DOS filament. So that's a nice hint of what kind of filaments we have. There's your DOS filament sticker. I hope you guys can see that. We'll go on the sticker wall when it goes back up again. We have pipsmountain.com. Not familiar with that company, but here's their little sticker. Ah, some information about Pips Mountain. Pips Mountain brings you... Oh, it's the monthly Dice Calendar subscription box. This is a in conjunction with MakerBox, and there's a promo code on here, and I won't share that with you guys. Uh, basically, they do tabletop gaming dice, if I remember correctly, and I do think they do a customizing, too, with the company. But either way, check out pipsmountain.com. They're advertised in this month's MakerBox, and hopefully there'll be a sample of one of their dice in here. And I see some trolleys. This is the Sour Bright Crawler Minis Tropical. Ooh, these are some good candies. Yeah, I'll definitely be eating those up right away. And we have our first color, uh, first type. So this first filament here is from DOS Filament. It's a metallic blue pet G, and you guys can see it already through the bag. The hot end temperature is 210 to 240. There is no bed temperature listed, no speed listed. Cooling says low to none. In my experience with pet G, that's a good idea. It says the information here says it's pet G is a cool metallic blue color, great for functional prints with a little bit more of a pop from the filament. And it just says go to dosfilament.de, this is made in Germany, for more information. This looks surprisingly familiar to some blue I just printed. I'll show you the close-up camera here. I'm sure you guys can see that. And I'll go ahead and cover up the QR code so you guys can see the filament, the DOS filament. All right, so there's our first filament sample. We have metallic blue petgy from DOS filament. 
and we have a lot of glow in the dark. It is the Halloween season, so this is appropriate. And this is glow in the dark green, obviously, PLA from, oh, this is from Keen Village. And they make some amazingly good filaments. So it's cool to see a sample from that company, Keen Village Plastics, in this month's maker box. So that's awesome. This is glow in the dark green PLA. Hot end temperature is 195 to 215 C. The bed temperature is room to 60. Speed is not provided. Cooling, yes. And the description here says this is a glow in the dark uh, filament is abrasive. So use a hardened nozzle, which I have on the GMAX 1.5 XT Plus. It's a high quality PLA filament, highly loaded with glow in the dark filler for a long, long, bright green glow. Awesome. I've never used any of their glow in the dark filament before. So here's the back of the package. So you guys can see that really brilliant green color. And let me cover up that QR code so you guys can see that. Hopefully nothing activated. If not, here it is there. And I'll review all this when we're done. Next up, we have something from 3D Fuel. It's the Dow Evolve 3D OVC. This is a copolymer. Interesting. And it's white, obviously, or natural. This might be natural. I think it is natural. Uh, we have a hot end temperature of 175 to 210 C, a bed temperature to 60 to 100 C, speed 10 to 40 millimeters per second. That's a really low speed. Is this flexible? Maybe it is. Uh, fan, no, will stick best to polypropylene tape or packing tape. So it probably needs a very smooth surface. Uh, let's read the, ins the information here. It says Evolve 3D Olefin Block Copolymer or OBC printing filament is a high performance 3D, 3D printing build material that prioritizes sustainable prioritizes sustainability across the product lifestyle. Made from a unique polyurethane based material, the Evolve 3D OBC filament is a breakthrough material that brings poly polyolefin, I'm saying that wrong, properties to 3D printing. It says a very low density for light strong parts. Interesting. It feels like it's a flexible filament. It's very interesting. Obviously, we'll have to check this out. Uh, it doesn't say anything about a heated enclosure or ventilation, but with any kind of cold polyester or cold polyester or blended materials, you, you may want to be careful and use some ventilation with that. But either way, here's the package, and you guys can see it's kind of a natural filament. And then I'll cover up that QR code so you guys can see the front of the package. There you go. It's number three. So this is from Plaz 3D, the maker's choice. This is their Sunrise Glimmer PLA. All right, you gotta see that right away. It is really catching the light. There's all kinds of little glint materials in this one. Like I said, it's from Plast 3D, the maker's choice. It's a hot end temperature of 190 to 210 C, a bed temperature of room to 45 C. There's no speed provided by the manufacturer. Cooling, yes, other none. Info says Plast 3D Sunrise Glimmer PLA is a special edition. It produces beautiful orange with a sparkly effect. It prints well in most printers, such as the following printers mentioned on here, which I have none of, but my GMAX 1.5 XT Plus can pretty much print anything as we saw last month. So this is some interesting PLA. It's asking for a bed temperature of room to 45 C. I'm always cautious when I see any kind of like uh, additives in PLA requiring a heated bed. That tells me that some of the polymers may require extra heat during the print, which is very different for PLA or different in my opinion from PLA, regular PLA. So we'll have, to, we'll have to really test this out carefully because I don't want to waste it by having failed prints or not having the prints stick to the bed because it is asking for room to 45 C. So either way, here it is. This is some really cool, I'm, I'm moving it in the package so you guys can see in the close-up camera that it does glint. And let's go ahead and cover up that QR code. And you guys can see the front package. All right, so we have four samples this month. Uh, we have some Sunrise Glimmer PLA, which we just talked about, and that's from Plast 3D. Turn that this way so you guys can still see me. This is from 3D Fuel. This is the Dow Evolve 3D OBC. This is a really interesting copolymer in a natural color. We have a sample of Keen Village Plastics Glow in the Dark Green, just in time for Halloween. I already know what I'm gonna be printing with this. And we have some really cool Pet G and Metallic Blue from Das Filament, another company I haven't tried. So the Keen Village, they are the same as MakeShaper. I've used their filaments before. I have used some 3D Fuel, so I'm familiar with their filaments, but these two companies, Plast 3D and Das Filament, these are newcomers. 
Uh, in no particular order, we're going to go through and, uh, of course, we did get a Pips Mountain card for their monthly dice calendar subscription box with a discount with a certain code they're working with MakerBox. I may check these guys out. A sticker from Das Filament and uh, obviously a sticker from the Pips Mountain people and some yummy trolley candy, which I will definitely be eating after I do all this because they're covered in sugar and super sticky. So we're going to go ahead and set this stuff over to the side. We'll change some cameras around. I'll get out my uh, tools to start doing my testing, which includes the bend test, the clip test, and we're going to measure the filament before we start printing, and then we'll start printing. So I'll see you guys in a couple minutes while I rearrange a few things and get started on our testing. All right, so we've got four materials this month, and we're going to go through and do our normal test, which is the clip test, the bend test, and we're also going to check the diameter. So let's get started. Let's go ahead and start with the Sunrise Glimmer PLA. And this is from PLOS 3D, the maker's choice. have a bit of a texture to it so that is probably going to interfere with a perfect measurement but that's pretty consistent at 1.71 1.72 even though it's not 1.75 it is a consistent diameter let's check this last part 1.71 so it's when within, within the tolerances of our printers Oh, that's already in line. Zip ties or our little twist ties have slipped. Let's see if we can get that corrected somewhat. It's not going to be perfect. It's got a really great color to it. Almost looks like blue vinyl cloth. King Village.
stuff is very rigid. This is going to be hard to get. So, very interesting filament. Definitely be fun to play with. Okay, we're done with all the printing except for one sample filament. This Dow Evolve 3D OBC, I just could not get this to stick to anything. And it actually suggests using polypropylene tape or packing tape, but I don't have a heated bed without build tech on it that I could use on my GMAX, and I don't have any other printers that have a smooth surface that I could apply some of the polypropylene tape, packing tape too. Now I do have some other surfaces and I do have some uh, Kapton tape and a couple other things I could have used, but that would have been requiring me to remove the build tech from my heated glass plate on my GMAX 1.5 XT Plus and then having to buy a new sheet of build tech. So I'm not copping out on, on doing the test on this filament. I'm just going to have to figure something out. But I wanted to get this review out to you guys because so you could see it. And the time has actually passed quite a lot since I started doing this printing. It took a little break and I'm back and I just want to make sure I get this review out to you guys. But anyway, this dowel, it, it looks like some interesting filament and it was starting to print. But what I noticed right away was that it was starting to just kind of curl and pucker up, even with the heated bed and all the, all the uh, requirements for this filament, which is a bed temperature of 60 to 100 C. And I tried 60, 70, 80, and then I blasted it up to 100. And on the hot end, it's 175 to 210, which is a huge spectrum of heat. So I don't have enough to run a temperature tower. So the best thing I could do was just try and print. So I picked the middle of the road temperature, which was 195, and I still could not get it to stay on the print bed. It seems to have such an elastic property, it just wants to go everywhere. So I think with the polypropylene tape, you're giving it a base to stick on, but I'm not sure if it's gonna leave some remnants. But either way, I did not get to print that. I'm sorry about this, MakerBox, but this, <laughs> this filament proved to be very challenging, and it's part of the reason why this review took a little longer to finish up. But the other three colors, as you can see, they all turned out amazing. The samples look really, really great. I haven't tested the glow in the dark. I was gonna save that for the end result here. I wanna see it uh, live in person with you guys. So to start with, let's go from the Sunrise Glimmer to the Pet G Metallic Blue to the glow in the dark green. So to start with, the Sunrise Glimmer. Now, this is a really cool filament. If you follow me on social media, you may have seen I think it was this that I previewed when I started printing with this. And I usually start with the Cali Cat. I didn't want to show you guys that until I had printed out a few more things as far as social media posts. But this Cali Cat turned out amazing. It is a very, very clean print. It's one of the cleanest prints. Now, I may have my printer dialed in perfectly at this, at this point, but I think it has a lot to do with filaments, especially this particular filament from PLOS 3D. It really, really was super easy to print. I had no failures. It's actually quite sturdy and its translucent abilities are quite amazing. So as you can see on the Cali Cat, this is a very, very clean Cali Cat. I've actually 
and I have the ABS one here handy, but it, it, I want to show you guys this it, uh, one more time. I mean, this is just, it's a perfect little Cali cat. It just looks really, really good. After that, of course, we printed our Rose Twist Ace, which is the print you did see on social media, and that turned out awesome too. I mean, there's such a cool glint because it is a glimmer uh, filament, glimmer PLA, but it's got a, a translucent, which I believe is the sunrise aspect of it. And all the prints just, like I said, they just turned out perfect. I had no problems whatsoever. As far as the settings go, it says 190 to 210. Now, all, let me preface it that all three of these filaments from three different manufacturers and three different types of filament in general, all printed on the sanded acrylic bed. So 190 to 210 is the temperature and it says room to 45. And of course we use the sanded acrylic, so we didn't need any bed temperature uh, or bed, uh, heated bed setting whatsoever. And the temperature I used for these was right in the middle of the road, as usual. That's usually where I aim when I'm testing filaments, is to go with the middle temperature. So 190 to 210 would give us 200. And that's what everything was printed on. Now, normally when I print the Cali Cat at 200 degrees on any PLA, I see a little bit of stringing and a little bit of curling on the corners, but I didn't see any of that. So with the Rose Twist Vase, the print came out awesome. And most of these prints are printed at a 0.24 millimeter layer height and usually at 40 millimeters per second. Next up was uh, Make Anything Devon's Monochromatic, I guess it would be, because it's the single color, monochromatic base. And again, this turned out awesome. Now I do have a method of printing that I print with my vases, which is two perimeters, not vase mode, but these are only printed in single perimeters. And this thing is pretty solid. So this is some really tough PLA, but this print turned out awesome. I had no problems whatsoever. And I had just enough filament left. I actually have a little bit more left and I was going to print something Halloween related, but I thought, you know what, there's really not a lot here. So I went ahead and just printed out a uh, little cup holder and it's a hexagon surface. And now this is a easy print, but it's one of those prints that has a unique properties to catch the light in a bunch of different directions. Plus it makes a nice little holder and you can put a little succulent plant in here and it is watertight. I don't know if you can see that. It did turn out watertight, even with a single perimeter and two bottom layers. So all the prints for the sunrise glimmer, they look amazing. This is some really fun filament to print with. It's from PLOS 3D and I'll put that information down below too. And information where you can subscribe and get your own maker box because I'm really loving doing these reviews on all this cool filament. So this, like I said, the Sunrise Glimmer PLA, this was really easy to print with. As you can see, the prints turned out awesome. I'm super happy with this. I'm probably going to buy some of this for maybe some Christmas ornaments or some other decorative things. Plus the strength gives me the confidence that I could print something like Halloween or Christmas related or holiday related. And it would last for years because this filament is super strong. It's, it's really strong, it was really strong filament. Next up was the Metallic Blue Pet G from DOS Filament. This was a really easy filament to print with as well on this handed acrylic. Although I probably could have used the heated bed because one part did have a little bit of warping. But in general, all these prints, including this carabiner, all of the prints were printed on the sanded acrylic on the G-Max 1.5 XT+. So as usual, we start with the Cali Cat, and I did use the middle of the road temperature here. Again, the temperatures for this particular Petchy are 210 to 240. It didn't list a bed temperature, no speed, no cooling listed, and it just it says that it's great for functional prints. So I used my middle of the road measurement, and I went with 225 on this, which is pretty hot in my opinion, even though it is Petchy. I've used Petchy in the past, and I don't think I've gone over 215 or 220, but 225. And I did see a little bit of the curling happening in the corners, and you can probably see it there in the close-up. So that led me to believe I should just drop that temperature down a little bit and not sacrifice layer bonding, because that's the main thing with Pedgy if you're printing mechanical parts is you want good layer bonding. But all in all, there was no stringing on here. There, I mean, there's some wisping at the end of the print, but there was no stringing. There didn't seem to be any problems at all with it. So I figured we would just go forward with the 220 instead of 225. So I loaded up the Rose Twist face and that turned out awesome. It's super clean, it's super smooth. It feels really, really strong. And I believe that one is watertight as well, using the same settings as I use for all my prints, 45 millimeters, 40 to 45 millimeters per second, 0.24 millimeter layer height. When applicable, sometimes I may go higher than that just to make it go faster, or I may go lower than that just to get pick up the detail, but usually 0.24 millimeter layers. And most of the models are printed with minimal infill just so the prints get fast. So there might be some top layer issues you, that you see on some of the prints, but that has nothing to do with the filament. That's just me trying to get the prints out. 
But this blue, this metallic blue patchy from DOS Filament, this is really, really cool. I like this filament a lot. I could see printing a couple of different items like an open RC car, or maybe even printing out some cool 3D printed fabric for cosplay. This is a really cool color and it's super durable for that. But the rose twist face turned out great. So the next thing I wanted to print out was something that was a little bit durable so I could test how strong the patchy was. So I went to Matter Hacker's website and I grabbed their carabiner. It's a two-part two print, super easy. Both parts are on the build plate. I think it takes like 25 to 35 minutes. It's really a fast print, depending on your infill. And of course, you wanna make sure you put some healthy infill on stuff like this, because it is going to be a part that you're going to be using for strength. First, I'm going to try and give it a little bit of a bend to see how strong it is. And I can feel a little bit of flex, but I don't feel it where it's gonna to point to the point where it's gonna break. So let's go ahead, if I remember how to do this. This one is pretty tough to get on. There we go. Pretty strong. I'd have confidence in this. Now I probably should be wearing gloves, but yeah, that's not gonna break. So this is some really, really strong Pudgy. I like this carabiner print because it's one of those prints that you can do multiple tests with. It's got some really strong curves in it. It's got some holes in it to test your over extrusion or under extrusion. Plus with these parts that go together and snap together, obviously you want to make sure those all fit together nicely. And this turned out awesome. I'm really happy with this print. And now that has become one of my standard test models when I do any more filament testing is I'm adding the Matter Hackers carabiner to it. So this was good. I was happy with the results on that. So I wanted to print out some sort of part for a 3D printer just in case I wanted to make my own or if I was going to do a modification to an existing printer and I wanted some cool new parts. And I figured since this is metallic blue pet G, this would be a good part or a good filament for printing out parts for a printer. And it did warp a little bit and I'm not sure why I used the sanded acrylic bed, but maybe I could have used a little bit of heat in this instance, but I wanted to try everything on the sanded acrylic this month. And it, it printed, and it's got a little bit of a curl to it. I don't know if you guys can see that. I'll, I'll just set it there. It's got a little bit of a curl to it, but I still think it would be an effective part as a test print. Now, all the holes turned out really clean. There's actually no problems. I didn't measure them to make sure that they turned out to be the right size for the bolts that we'd use for this. But I think this part turned out awesome. I probably could have added another couple of top layers because it has got a little bit of pillowing going on. But I think effectively this turned out to be a good test print for printing parts for a 3D printer. So I do have a little bit more filament left of the metallic glue, but not really enough to print something else. I might be able to squeeze out another carabiner, but I'm pretty happy with the way these prints turned out. And this is definitely some cool metallic blue patchy from Dots Filament. I highly recommend this stuff. It's super easy to print with. And of course, having a sample in this month's maker box makes it easy for me to try out this cool filament and give my results to you guys. And this is definitely a filament I can recommend. The next filament we printed with was the glow in the dark, glow in the dark green PLA from Keen Village Plastics. Now this was, a, again, I didn't use anything special for this. I used my sanded acrylic bed. I do have a hardened nozzle, 0.5 millimeter hardened nozzle, but nothing else special for this. It was the same as all my other prints. Now the temperature is 195 to 215 and the bed temperature says room 260C and they do uh, suggest cooling. And it's a high quality PLA loaded with glow in the dark filler for a long bright green. Now again, I haven't tested the glow in the dark aspect. I'll set it up as we wrap up the video. We'll expose this to a little bit of light and then we'll shut all the lights off with the camera rolling and see how well it glows in the dark. But as always, we start with the Cali Cat and this guy turned out quite perfect. I don't know if you can see if the camera will sharpen the focus over there but that turned out quite perfect. I was so happy with the results. A lot of times with these glow-in-the-dark filaments or any kind of filament with a material added to it, they become very abrasive, and sometimes that can leave little defects on the surface or it can wear out your nozzle. So definitely suggest using a hardened nozzle. I know some people will say you really don't need a hardened nozzle for this particular PLA, but I would suggest getting one because I ran glitter or glimmer, pet G, and then glow-in-the-dark through, and my nozzle's still fine because it's hardened. But this Cali Cat turned out great. I'm super happy with the way it looks. It's got nice sharp corners where the head meets the body. There's not a lot of stringing between the tail, which is a good test. And this is a really great test model to add to your arsenal. It's definitely one of my favorite test models. So happy with the Cali Cat. The temperatures that we use was 200 on the, on the nozzle because that kind of splits the middle of 195 to 215. And I didn't have any problems at 200. So next up was the Rose Twist Face. 
which is one again another favorite test model and this one turned out really good now the, this filament appears to have somewhat of a matte finish to it and inside the the original filament itself it's not really matte it's kind of glossy so that was a change from you know i'm sure that if you increase the temperature on some filaments they'll get a little glossier but i noticed right away that it had a nice matte finish which is fine for glow in the dark it doesn't need to have a shiny finish to it but the rose twist face turned out awesome I'm super happy with the way this looks and of course then it was time to print out <laughs> another one of those matter hackers carabiners now this is just pla so this may break in my hands but we're going to go ahead and do this live on camera let's see if i remember to do this right this time little deal down and that's all together now i'm not going to yank on this one because i have a feeling i actually could break this well, i'll give it a little tug and see what happens i heard a little crinkling but i didn't feel it was like it was going to break that's actually pretty strong. That's some pretty strong little PLA. It's glow-in-the-dark, so definitely, you know, use it for things like glow-in-the-dark things. But it is a fun-to-print PLA that you could use for other parts as part of something bigger. But the carabiner turned out great. I can see the infill through the print, so maybe I should have used a few more top layers. And there are some defects here near the Matter Hackers logo. But overall, this turned out awesome. I'm super happy with it. And as you can see, it is pretty strong. Next up was this little Kubo Monkey Idol which I wanted to have just some sort of figure to have glow in the dark. And this was a short print and it used up a good portion of the remainder of the filament, but he turned out super, super clean. There are some overhangs on him and he's got kind of a really cool finish to him. He's, you can detail of him that's in the actual sculpt of the model. And overall the print surface is really clean and it's got that same matte finish. So I guess the next step is to expose these to light and see how well they glow in the dark. And we'll insert that footage right here. Okay, so we've gone over all the prints for this month's MakerBox sample filaments, and I'm really happy with the results. The glow in the dark looks really, really cool. It's got a nice matte finish. It was really easy to print with, and it's super strong. That PETG is pretty awesome, and it's a nice metallic blue color. Again, super strong filament. Might need to add a little bit of heat if I'm gonna print any parts that are for a printer or any kind of machine parts. And we have the Sunrise Glimmer PLA, which is a really unique filament. It's got a really strong glimmer to it. It almost looks like a bit of a honey gold on one angle and then the other angle it looks almost metallic so that was a really fun filament to print with and of course we had our challenging filament for the month which is the dow evolve 3d obc from 3d fuel now i've printed with 3d fuel before so i'm going to get this to print at some point and i'll share those results with you guys on social media but for now i think that pretty much wraps it up for this month's maker box the filament selection is really really cool all the prints that are, all the models that I printed, that links, those links will be down in the description so you guys can download and print them yourself. I definitely suggest adding the Cali Cat to your 3D printing arsenal for test prints. And definitely check out MakerBox. This is a really cool monthly subscription service with multiple levels, which gives you different amounts of filament every month. This is the four pack and it gives you four great samples to choose from. Plus we got some stickers and a little bit of candy and some coupon offers. So if you're looking for a really cool monthly subscription service for filament and you want to get some really cool samples like we got this month, check out MakerBox. Well, that about wraps it up for this month's MakerBox review. A huge shout out to MakerBox for sending this along for us to test and review on the channel. Of course, we weren't compensated in any way. We just get to play with some really cool filaments every month. I hope you guys found this episode interesting and informative. And if you're looking for ways to support the channel, check out the affiliate links and all the other ways you can do it down in the description below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to the channel, comment, like, and share those videos, and I'll talk to you guys real soon.